Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this lecture, we're going to be discussing hypoxia. Now, this is part one of a two-part series where we're going to be discussing the concept of hypoxia because this is a very high-yield topic, something you definitely need to know, something you will be tested on for years to come at every step of your medical education. So with that being said, let's discuss hypoxia by first discussing the basis of or the basic concept of cellular injury. What you need to remember is our cells are able to uh, handle a lot of stress. They are very resilient. But when the amount of stress exceeds the ability to adapt to that stress, our cells get injured. And that's when you have cellular injury happening. When you have too much stress for the level that they can handle, meaning they can't adapt to it. Now, there are many different ranges of injury, and essentially it depends on the type of cell, uh, the type of stress, but mainly, more specifically, it depends on the severity of the stress. The severity is going to be the main defining factor of whether or not a cell can handle a, uh, a stressor or not. So when it comes to our cells, the other thing you need to realize is that certain cells like your neurons and your cardiac cells are way more susceptible to stress, meaning they are more likely to die off faster when they are put under a, uh, a certain amount of stress. Okay, so I would say these are weaker cells, even though they're not necessarily, but just for the sake of the argument. Whereas you have other cells, like your muscle cells, that are more resilient. They're able to handle more. So I'm gonna call these stronger cells. Um, you know, muscles, stronger, kind of makes sense. Well, that is essentially how cellular injury occurs. Now, when it comes to the causes, you have many different causes like hypoxia, which we're gonna be discussing in this lecture, but we're also gonna be discussing in the upcoming lecture the other causes of cellular injury, like inflammation, like malnourishment, such as genetic mutations, even trauma. Okay, so stay tuned for the upcoming lectures. So in this video, in this lecture, we're gonna be discussing hypoxia. So let's just dive right into it. Let's give you a brief overview of hypoxia. We'll discuss some of the causes of hypoxia and then we'll end this lecture and then we'll move on to part two. So hypoxia, Hypoxia specifically is a condition in the body where a part of the body or the whole body is deprived of enough oxygen supply at the tissue level, okay? So hypoxia, I'm gonna write this on the side, has to do at the tissue level. Very, very important because as you know, there is another condition called hypoxemia, which we're gonna be discussing later, that does not occur at the tissue level. So essentially, hypoxia is low oxygen delivery to the tissues. And the tissues, our whole body essentially, is very dependent on oxygen. Why is that the case? Now, you're going to have to think back to your dreaded biochemistry courses, which everyone forgets and everyone hates. But when you're thinking biochemistry-wise, uh, oxygen is very important because of the fact that it is the final electron acceptor in the electron transport chain. Oh, man, I know. A lot of y'all probably forgot about this, but this is oxygen. Oxygen accepts the final electron. So what happens when the final electron is accepted? Essentially, you are going to go through oxidative phosphorylation and you are going to generate, say it with me, ATP. So you need oxygen to generate ATP. If you lack oxygen, you're not going to be able to go through oxidative phosphorylation and then you're going to have low ATP. If you have low ATP, your body cannot do the functions it needs, the, the basic function it needs to do. And if it can't do that, essentially you will end up dying. That is why hypoglycemia is so uh, dangerous because you don't have enough uh, essential glucose to create ATP and you can end up dying, okay? So lack of oxygen, lack of ATP, death, straightforward. That's why you need oxygen. Now, when it comes to the causes of hypoxia, there are three main causes you need to know about. One of which we're gonna discuss in this lecture and the other two we're gonna be discussing in part two. So the first cause of hypoxia is ischemia. Ischemia leads to hypoxia. It sounds pretty straightforward, but we're still going to discuss it. The other cause of hypoxia is hypoxemia. And the last cause is decreased oxygen carrying capacity. Both of these are very high yield topics, things you need to understand very well. So we are dedicating part two just to these two topics. But essentially, ischemia is what we're going to be discussing to close this lecture. So let's just dive right into it. Ischemia occurs when you have insufficient blood flow to a tissue. It could be any tissue. If you are not supplying a tissue with enough or adequate amount of blood, you are going to kill that tissue because it is in the blood that we are actually transporting oxygen. So if you are not 
perfusing well enough, you are going to have ischemia. And you will have ischemia simply because oxygen is not being delivered. Now, there are three main mechanisms of ischemia. And it's very simple, it's very straightforward, and we're gonna talk about it very briefly, okay? So let's say here is your organ, and for the sake of the argument today, we are going to use the kidney. Here's a kidney, okay? And you have blood coming to the kidney, which is the arterial supply, and then you have blood leaving the kidney, okay? which is your venous supply, okay? And this is your kidney. Okay, so how can you get ischemia? How can you interrupt blood flowing to a tissue? Well, the first way you can interrupt it is by decreasing blood going to an organ, aka arterial blockade. So in this diagram right here, let's say we block this portion right here of the artery, and uh, that means that the renal artery is not supplying the kidney. If that's the case, the kidney will go through ischemia because you are not getting enough blood to the organ. That's the first type. The second mechanism of ischemia is pretty much very similar to the first one. You have decreased blood going from an organ, aka venous blockade. So if you're blocking the venous system right here, like the renal vein, well, what does that do? You are blocking blood going from the organ. If that's the case, then blood is going to back up on this side, right? So it won't be able to go forward, forward, and eventually you will run out of oxygen in this area, right? Because you are not supplying the organ with new blood, blood that is in a higher oxygen content. You have less oxygen now that is reaching the organ and that organ will undergo ischemia because you have insufficient blood flow. And then the last concept, the last concept is very, is very broad, is very general, and that is the concept of shock. When you have shock, you have decreased perfusion generally throughout the vital organs. You are not perfusing your vital organs, you are going in a state of shock. And when that happens, overall, you're you are going to see ischemia in multiple different organs, especially depending on how broad and how, ex especially depending on the extent of the shock that's happening, okay? So how can these three mechanisms happen? Essentially, when you're talking about ischemia, you have two main ways that you can get ischemia. Number one, you can have an embolic event, like a heart attack. A heart attack essentially will decrease overall blood flow to the uh, organs. Now, uh, the heart attack is usually happening because you have some sort of you know, uh, blockade in the heart, but because the heart isn't able to pump, you are not going to be able to perfuse the rest of the organs. Another type of embolic event could be like an emboli. So let's say you have a DVT. If you have a DVT, that DVT can then go into the lungs. And then that DVT, that a little clot can stop in the lungs and cause a PE. And when you have a PE, you're going to get tissue, ischemic tissue happening no matter what, because you are blocking blood flow to not just the lungs then, but also to the rest of the organs. So that's another example. So you can get a PE. So an emboli can cause it. In terms of the heart attack that we discussed, this wouldn't be an embolic event. This would be a thrombus because something would form and cause a blockade in the heart that would lead to overall decrease in blood flow. But this is one example, okay? Or if you have something blocking uh, perfusion to the legs, you can get death of or necrosis of tissue because you have arterial or venous uh, atherosclerosis. That can also cause ischemia. The other way you can get ischemia is through trauma. Trauma to a tissue will result in damage of that tissue as well as the supply chain. So you are going to damage the artery. So let's say you transect the artery right here, or let's say you transect the venous right here, the venous return to the supply. Well, you will not only lose a lot of blood, but you will also have less blood going to those tissues, and that can also lead to ischemia. So. I hope this makes sense. This is just a basic understanding of hypoxia, part one. In the next lecture, we're gonna be discussing both hypoxemia as well as a, the concept of decreased oxygen carrying capacity. I hope you found this video educational and helpful. If you did, consider subscribing to our channel because your support really means a lot to us. If you like this content and you wanna see more content like this, go to our website at www.madmedicine.org where you can find more educational content for your exam prep free of charge.
Thank you.